Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic inexorable video. In this video we're going to be looking at paper. Paper is a very interesting topic, paper. I love paper. So um, what are we talk about paper here? So there is a number file video on this on this topic but I thought I'd sort of do my own take on it as well. Um, but uh, this is essentially the concept here. If you consider um, any size paper from the international paper system, the international paper system is, you know, A5, A4, A3, A2, A1, A0, A6, A7, you know, all of those um, sizes of paper. Uh, some people know this, some people don't, but here's a little breakdown of how those work. If you have a an A4 piece of paper just like this, if you fold it down this line, Fold it in half, there you go. Obviously, you get this shape here. And of course, you know, just you can tell by looking at it that this clearly has half the area of the original shape. So here's the original. There's half of the original, right? Obviously. But there's, there's actually something very special about um, A4 paper and actually A any size paper, A, N, we can call it. Uh, so A3, A, A1, any size, there's something very special. Because we can fold this again. And just to be clear, if the original size was A4, this is A5, this is A5 paper. It's been folded in half, it's A5, it's shrunk by half. If you fold the paper in half again, you get A6 paper. If you fold it in half again, you get A7 paper. Every time you fold it in half, it just goes up to the next A, N, you know. Fold it in half, you get A of N plus 1 paper. That's very interesting. That's cool. So, uh, for example, A3 paper is double the size of A4 paper. Uh, A2 paper is double the size of A3 paper, and so on. But there's something very special about the dimensions of these pieces of paper. So we go back to the A4, just this one here. Look at the widths and lengths here. So let's say that the width is the horizontal sort of length here, and the, the length is the vertical um, length. Um, the ratio of width to length on this A4 piece of paper is a very special ratio, and I've written it down actually um, already. Um, the ratio of the width to the length is one to root two. And just to remind you, root 2 is roughly 1.414, but obviously root 2 is an irrational number, so the uh, the decimal expansion just goes on forever. It's like pi, it goes on forever. So you can't ever finish writing the number root 2. Now, you might think, okay, that's brilliant, you know, you've just shown me you're folding paper in half and it, oh, there's, there's a cool ratio there. It's actually a lot more than that, because this ratio, 1 to root 2, is the only ratio possible where if you fold the piece of paper in half, you get the same ratio of width to length every time. So look at this piece of paper. This just looks like, this is A5, it just looks like an, an A4 piece of paper that's been shrunk. If you fold it again, it just looks like an A5 or an A4 piece of paper that has been shrunk. The ratio of width to length is the same no matter how many times I fold it. Take any other shape, it doesn't do it. So, take a square piece of paper. Here's a square. Fold this paper in half to make a rectangle. Okay, the area is half, yes, but the ratios are totally different. I mean, look at this thing. This is not the same ratio as a square. This isn't a square, so it doesn't work. And that's really inconvenient. What we would like is to be able to fold a piece of paper in half, and not only does it get half the size, but it stays the same shape, because that's really convenient for obvious reasons. You know, maybe you want to enlarge something, you want to print something off, but bigger. You want to be able to just print it off, um, and it be double the size. You don't have to move things around on your Word document or whatever. Same thing with halving the size. If you want to half the size of a, a piece of paper or, or a document, um, you want it to be in the same ratio so that it looks the same but smaller when you print it off. Okay. So this is the interesting thing. The only ratio that does it is 1 to root 2. Now, I'm going to show you why if you don't believe me. This is the proof of why that happens. That's what this video is about.
So this is this is why the ratio is here. And I find this very, very interesting indeed. So let's consider a piece of paper. Let's say it has a width of A and a length of B, just like how I've written it down. So I'm gonna redraw that, but I am gonna draw it slightly larger because um, it, I think it's gonna be quite nice to, to have a bit more um, space here. So this is A and B. Now, I wanna fold, you know, pretend that this is an A4 piece of paper or any, any A you want. I wanna fold it along the, uh, the line of symmetry, the center line, and I want, what I want is for this, let's take the top, um, the top piece of paper. I want the resulting paper, so let's say that we fold it in half, we fold the bottom and it comes up so that the, uh, the, the bird's eye view of what we've just, the paper that we just folded in half looks like this, okay? What I want is the ratio um, of the, uh, the sides to be the same. I want it to be the exact same shape, but smaller. That's what I want. Now, we can just look and we can figure out what these sides are, right? So for example, uh, let's do this in red to really show things. This length here, this is A. And so this here is also A, right? It's the same piece of paper. It's got, it's basically its width is now its new length, if that makes sense. And B is this whole thing here, isn't it? The length B is this whole thing. But we can clearly see that the new length is half there. So this is B over two. I hope that we can see that. So now we have an equation. But, and we can do it in terms of ratios, but ratios are sometimes annoying to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it as a fraction, okay? So, if we basically take B divided by A, that number, that should be the same. So this is basically taking the length of the paper divided by its width. It should be the same for both papers, right? Because they're in the same ratio. So the length divided by the width of any of these papers, if it's an A4, A3, the ratio should be the same. So the fraction, the quotient, B divided by A, length divided by width, should always be the same. So I'm quite happy to say length over width of the original paper, that's B over A, is equal to length over width of the new bit of paper. And that is A, because A is the new length, it's the long side now of the new paper, divided by half of B. So I'm gonna write that as B over two. Okay, now this is very, very good. We, we have an actual equation. Now, you, you could do it with ratios, but now we have an actual equation. It's much easier to solve and get numbers out. Very, very, very good. And all we need to do is simplify this thing and just get an expression out. So the, the left-hand side, I'm just going to keep that the same for, for the minute. Okay, so B over A. That's just the left-hand side. Um, and I, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. So that's the left, but... What I want to do is I want to simplify the right hand side because it's ugly, right? It's like a fraction. There's a fraction in the denominator. I don't, I don't really like that. So what I shall do is I shall multiply the bottom and the top by two, okay? Because it's a fraction, you can do that to simplify. So a times two is two a, that's what we get on the top. And b over two times two, that's just b, isn't it? Again, because we're just, we're halving b and then timesing by two again. So now, b over a, we know that it's equal to 2a over b. It's the same thing as what's written above it, um, but it's just, it looks nicer. I hope that we can agree on that. Okay, now let's get rid of the fractions. I don't like fractions anymore. Uh, so we want to get rid of them. So first of all, let's multiply the left and the right hand side by a. So we're going to get b is equal to 2a squared over b, okay? Because so b over a times a is b, and 2a over b times a is 2a squared over b, just like that. Okay, next step. We still have a fraction here, because on the right-hand side it's being divided by b, so let's times the left and the right now by b. So then we get b squared is equal to 2a squared, just like that. And again, the reason for that is we've just multiplied the left and the right by b. So on the left-hand side, b times b is b squared. And on the right-hand side, 2a squared divided by b times b 
is just 2a squared because the divided by b times by b, they cancel out with each other. Nice. So now we have this. We have this equation here. This is quite nice. Um, and what I want to do now is I'm actually going to say, let because now we kind of want to go back to the ratio. Let's let a be 1. Okay, let's just let it be 1. So I'm going to write that here. Let a be 1. Okay, so let's just see what b is when a is 1 unit. When a is 1, we have b squared is equal to 2 times 1 squared. Now, 1 squared is just 1, and 2 times 1 is just 2. So let's just get rid of this here. We don't actually need it. b squared is 2, okay, just by simplifying. If b squared is 2, then what's b? Well, that means that b is the square root of 2. And no, it's not minus root 2 as well, because it technically could be, but remember, b has to be a length here. We're talking about length, so it's not going to be a negative number. Technically, b is allowed to be negative 2, because uh, negative root 2 rather, because yes, minus root 2 squared is 2. So yes, it technically satisfies the equation, but we want b to be positive, so we're going to say b is only positive the square root of 2. Perfect. And this is basically it, guys. This is this is literally kind of it. So for any, um, if basically if we take a piece of paper, if it has a width of, let's say one meter, so it's a really big piece of paper, width of one meter, it has a length of the square root of two meters, and so on. If you want a more general sense, we can then say, by the way, a is one, b is root two, so the ratio a to b is 1 to root 2 and that's that's proven it like that's it but if you want it in more general terms we can come back up here to this step and we can just kind of solve it uh, for whatever you want so we can solve it for b we can say that b let's take the square root of both sides is equal to the square root of 2 times a squared just like that now that simplifies to a times root 2 just like that okay so for example if you take a piece of paper uh, that's you know in in this ratio one of the a you know a4 a3 whatever if you measure on here if you say okay what's a if you measure it i actually don't know how long a piece of paper is on like an a4 piece of paper but measure it however many units it is that's a this equation here is telling us that b is a but then times by root 2 and that is what we're looking for so that's how you prove it that's how you show it it's either way uh, it doesn't really matter how you've written it you can write it as a ratio you can write it as an equation it doesn't really matter um, or you can write it in one more way you can take this equation and you can divide both sides by a and then you get b over a is equal to root 2 which and this is this is the same as the one that's above it but this is nice as well it tells us literally b divided by a is always the square root of 2 and that's kind of what we're looking for so any one of these three things that i've written down they are all uh satisfactory they're hopefully they're all proof enough to you that uh, the ratio of a piece of paper's width to its length is 1 to root 2 and i think that's actually very interesting quite profound that uh, in order for a paper to have this property, one of its lengths has to be irrational.